let's talk a little bit about uh, GABA. Now, GABA, as I have mentioned before, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. What that means is that it binds to these specific chloride channels and it allows the cell to become more negative. Now, when a person takes too many, for example, benzodiazepines or drinks too much alcohol, which artificially increases GABA for a prolonged period of time, what it does is that it decreases the body's natural production of GABA. So the person basically does not have the ability to, uh, I guess, to have their own body's uh, inhibitory neurotransmitters. And this actually disbalances the cell, the nerve cell, insanely. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this now, but inhibitory neurotransmitters are very important for dampening uh, excitatory signals. As you can see, the chloride uh, ions are negatively charged, and that means that when these negatively charged ions enter the nerve cell through these uh, channels, it causes the nerve cell to dampen the signals, or it makes, it, uh, makes the nerve cell negative overall. And as I've described previously, if there is more negative uh, charge in the nerve cell, there is less chance of an action potential being fired. Uh, now, these processes are all happening simultaneously, by the way. I'm really simplifying it for you guys. But if a person does not have adequate GABA production, that means that their nerve cells become even more hyperactive because there's no negatively charged ions to dampen the signals. So a person's action potentials are firing like crazy, and that, in turn, is why tinnitus, which is caused or worsened by benzodiazepines, is so severe. Now, many of you have asked me, can a person take drugs like benzodiazepines that increase GABA to induce long-term depression? Now, unfortunately, even though these um, inhibitory neurotransmitters do dampen these excitatory signals and they can potentially, uh, while you're taking them at least, like benzos, temporarily decrease the amount of action potentials that are fired, uh, potentially reducing the tinnitus uh, perception, uh, they cannot be used for inducing long-term depression. And that's because, as I've mentioned in my previous video, um, long-term depression is initiated only after sustained uh, decrease of calcium influx. Now, while GABA, or while these negatively charged ions, do dampen the nerve signals, they do not actually change the influx of calcium into the cell. Hence, the cell does not feel the need to remove amper receptors. You can kind of imagine it as, um, you know, the heightened neural activity being uh, the heat turned on in a car. Uh, and instead of turning down the heat itself, which would be like the removal of amper receptors, ergo long-term depression, you just turn on the air conditioning at the same time. So you're not actually decreasing the heat at its, as it, at its source, you're just kind of balancing it out by in, in increasing the cold airflow, for example. Now, some people have stated, and this is including me as well, that while they are on benzodiazepines, they spike less, and that is true, that is possible. Uh, because of the increased chloride influx, um, it hyperpolarizes the neurons, making them less excitable. And this reduces the likelihood of hyperactive neurons in the tinnitus pathway firing continuously, effectively dampening the self-sustaining feedback loop that causes the tinnitus to spike. So with increased inhibition, the neurons are temporarily less able to reinforce their own activity, reducing tinnitus perception and preventing spikes potentially, but this is only a temporary solution.